we thought this would be a good time of year to touch on the question of charitable giving. Now, this affects both charities and certain other organisations, and in particular, registered community amateur sports clubs can also benefit. Now, charitable giving can be done by businesses, whether they be companies or not, and also by individuals. But this is a huge topic, so we'll return to the question of individuals next week. Either way, we only have time to just scratch the surface. While there are many similarities between the tax treatments of gifts by companies and individuals, you will notice, of course, that individuals pay net of basic rate tax. So when it comes to companies, there are a number of different ways in which they can make a donation to a charity. Here are some of the principal headings, and we will deal with some of these in the next few slides. The payment of money is probably the simplest way of making a donation. It is paid gross, there's no tax deducted, and so the charity cannot reclaim any tax on the donation. There are various conditions attached to the gift of money, and these are shown on the slide. To qualify as a donation, there must be a strong element of gift, and so there is a limit to the benefit that can be received in return for the gift. The limits are laid down, and you can find these on the HMRC website. The alternative is to treat the payment as sponsorship. When you make a gift of equipment, you can claim the capital allowances on that equipment, but it must have been used by your company. It can include office furniture, computers, printers, vans, cars, and any tools or machinery. Where you donate stock to a charity, you would ordinarily account for VAT on the cost of that stock, unless it is specifically for the charity to sell, hire, or export. The alternative is to make a small nominal charge. Where the gift is land, property or shares, you can deduct the market value of these items together with any legal costs associated with the transaction. One thing to bear in mind is you cannot gift shares in your own company. Where you second a member of your staff to a charity, you continue to pay them on PAYE and the cost of the payroll and any business expenses is tax deductible. Now, sponsorship is where your company does receive a significant benefit from the charity because you are basically buying their support in promoting your own business. You will therefore get various benefits from the relationship. Finally, I would like to take a brief look at how a charity can utilise these rules to its own advantage. Where a charity undertakes trading activities, there are strict limits to how much trading it can undertake in its own name. The trade is therefore typically transferred to a trading subsidiary, and this trading subsidiary is subject to corporation tax, as it is not a charity. The way in which the profits are then transferred to the charity is by way of gift aid, and in this way the taxable profits are turned into non-taxable donations and no tax is paid by either company. This is a vast area and we have only just touched on elements of charitable giving by companies. It is therefore wise to come speak to us if you have any concerns. I am Alan Long of the Long Partnership, slaying your tax dragons and making life less taxing.